Hey guys and girls, in this video we're gonna take a look at the best beginner cameras. I have made my research and this list reflects my personal opinion and I have listed products based on quality, durability, price and more. I've included options for every type of consumer so if you're looking for an entry level option or the best product money can buy we may have the product for you in this list. If you want more information and updated pricing on the products mentioned be sure to check the links in the description down below. The products mentioned are in no exact order so be sure to stay till the end so you don't miss anything. Also if you want a chance to win one of the beginner cameras in the video just subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and leave a comment with the hidden word in the video. We will pick a winner and notify him when we reach 5000 likes. And don't forget to join our community telegram channel linked in the description so we can contact you if you win. Okay, so without further ado, this is our pick of the best beginner cameras on the market right now. Coming at number 10, we've got the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II. For those just starting out in photography, Fujifilm's X-T30 was already a compelling mid-range option, but this second iteration adds a few improvements. The X-T32 uses the same chassis and vintage shell as its predecessor, which is okay because you won't immediately notice any changes. It has a beautiful design that is easy for beginners to grasp. The touchscreen has somewhat improved sharpness but is still tilt only. Testing revealed that the X-T30 doesn't alter the first version's performance formula. It still strikes a mix between capable shooting abilities and small dimensions using the same APS-C sensor and 425-point AF system. However, a new algorithm tracks moving objects more precisely. While it's not ideal, we discovered that it works best when focused on well-known topics. The X-T32 did well to pick out features even in lesser illumination thanks to improvements made to the focus point sensitivity. Although it is not necessary to upgrade from the original, the X-T32 is a good all-arounder with the capabilities to advance your photography. Number 9. Panasonic GH5 Mark II Although the Panasonic GH6 may not yet be available for serious filmmakers, the GH5 Mark II is the best mirrorless option for beginners and those wishing to start live streaming. Its primary selling point is its integrated wireless live streaming streaming capabilities, which are uncommon in mirrorless cameras. A recent firmware upgrade has added amazing 4 Kelvin live streaming capabilities to these as well. The GH5 Mark II has excellent all-around video capabilities, including the ability to record 10-bit 4-2, 2 footage either internally or externally, a vast range of supported frame rates, and a variety of anamorphic video resolutions. In addition to being a terrific tool to hone your video production skills, Panasonic's Flat Vlog Pro profile provides 12 stops of dynamic range for post-production experimentation. All of this are housed in a compact, light, waterproof housing with effective in-body image stabilization. This entry-level camera performs admirably in most conditions during testing, thanks in large part to the upgraded 5-axis in-body image stabilization system. This is a good video camera that can serve as your YouTube or Twitch streaming workhorse and is equally at home on the road. Coming at number 8 Olympus OMDEM 10 Mark IV. The OMDEM 10 Mark IV deserves a spot on your shortlist if you're seeking for a straightforward, small mirrorless camera that regularly produces beautiful photographs. Its ergonomic grip, welcoming button layout, and convenient flip-down touchscreen which are all designed particularly for smartphone switchers, provided good adaptability without clogging the traditionally fashion shell. Although it lacks some of the more sophisticated capabilities of its more expensive competitors, such as a microphone and USB-C connections, it excels as a stills camera. In fact, we discovered that it's the category's most photo-focused camera, producing superb stills in our tests. Long exposures can be tried out with ease thanks to the advanced photo mode and the in-body image stabilization system, borrowed from the flagship EM-1, is excellent. Given that it is a micro four-thirds camera, which has one of the largest lens catalogs on the market, the sensor resolution is respectable at 23 MP. The Mark IV is a great first camera for beginners even though it may not garner much attention. Coming at number 7 Panasonic Lumix CS200 divided by TZ200. The Lumix CS200 is your best option if you'd want to begin photography using a compact camera rather than a larger mirrorless model. 
or DSLR and tests it produced sharp, detailed images that not only have a natural appearance but also look bright and vivid. It can also compete very favorably with cameras that have larger sensors. The ZS200 may appear to be a point-and-shoot camera, but it features a 1-inch sensor, a large variety of manual controls, and a super versatile lens for complete creative freedom. You can rapidly change settings like the aperture or shutter speed while walking down the street since the lens has control dials on the top and all the way around the barrel. Despite its diminutive size, the electronic viewfinder offers a respectable 2.33 million dot resolution, which is a significant improvement over phone cameras. The ZS200 makes a good starter camera for those who prefer manual controls in a small, covert package when 4 Kelvin video and an intuitive touchscreen interface are added. Number 6. Nikon ZFC The Nikon ZFC and Nikon Z50 are essentially the same camera. That's great news as its 20, 9MP APS-C sensor and hybrid autofocus technology can capture accurate still images and reliable 4 Kelvin footage at 30 frames per second. The ZFC's distinctive body, which was created in homage to the vintage Nikon FM2, is what makes it unique. It is almost the same size as its analog ancestor, and it has plenty of retro design appropriate for its 1980s roots. Because of these clever retro hints, the Nikon ZFC is a standout camera. Although it lacks the deep grip of the Z50 and is not weather sealed, it is much better for novices than the Z50 because it has a variable angle display that allows for more flexible creative framing. Coming in at number 5, Sony Alpha A6000. The award winning Sony A6000 continues to be a superb value for photography enthusiasts despite being more than 5 years old. Despite its small size, the A6000 is equipped with an excellent 24, 3MP APS-C sensor that can take detailed pictures at up to 11 frames per second. Although outdated, it uses 179 points in its autofocusing system to track moving targets and performed well in our testing. This combination makes it a wonderful option for those who want to capture images of animals, moving family members, and sporting events. Sony has managed to fit an electronic viewfinder into a device that most cameras of this size can only give as an LCD monitor. This boosts the A6000's usability when taking images on sunny days. When snapping pictures of moving subjects, holding the camera up to your eye also increases stability. Unfortunately, the A6000's 921K dot LCD display lacks touch capabilities, which highlights how old it is. The absence of a sufficient selection of lenses was one of the cameras in the Sony Alpha series early detractors. But since the A6000's first release, a lot has happened. With the help of Sigma's MC11 adapter, the A6000 can now be used with a wide range of excellent Sony lenses as well as third-party EF mount lenses. The Sony A6000 is a reliable option that has withstood the test of time if photography is your primary interest and you are content with being just able to record in full HD 1080p. Coming at number 4, Sony A7IV. It was never going to be simple to follow Sony's brilliant A7 III, but the A7IV is a respectable sequel. It's an intriguing mirrorless alternative for hybrid shooters and comes with a new 33MP sensor that performs well in both still and video situations. It is a great blend of photographic capability and video adaptability, as we stated in our review. While a price increase means it is no longer an entry-level full-frame camera like its predecessor, the Beyonce XR processor provides strong performance that more than makes up for the additional cost. Additionally, Sony's A7IV benefits from improvements like 10-bit video capability and a buffer depth that seems to never stop when using a CF Express card, as well as its industry-leading autofocus capabilities. In our tests, we discovered that this buffer is more generous than the majority of shooters will require, with image quality favoring resolution over low-light performance. No hybrid camera is perfect. 4 Kelvin footage has a significant crop, and it isn't the easiest camera for beginners to use. For a comparable cost, the Canon EOS R6 also has quicker burst speeds. But the Sony A7 IV rightfully claims the top spot thanks to its strong adaptability and greater resolution. Number 3 Fujifilm XS10 The Fujifilm XS10 is a unique camera that combines size, performance, affordability, and charm in a way that few other cameras can. It's a great option that covers all the essentials for still photos and videos for professionals and hobbyists searching for a tiny mirrorless camera. You receive a tested and trusted 26. 
one MP APS-C sensor, which is the same as the one in the Fujifilm X-T4, as well as outstanding in-body image stabilization for a camera this small, as was discovered in our review. Some tiny Sony and Olympus cameras also have this capability, which aids in maintaining image quality while shooting handheld, but none of them, in our testing, match the x grade S10's handling or feature set. It boasts a useful VARI angle screen, excellent construction, and it captures stunning 4 Kelvin video. With a prime lens, it makes a great travel or street camera, but the X Generous S10's grip also makes it work well with longer lenses. Coming at number 2 Sony ZV-1 Focused almost entirely on vlogging, the Sony ZV-1 is one of the best compact cameras for creating video. Its combination of a bright F divided by 1.8 minus 2.8 lens, intelligent AF and articulated screen make it a compelling choice for people who enjoy creating video content and want to make a significant step up from their smartphone. Sony's incredibly popular 20 1MP 1-inch sensor sits at the heart of the ZV-1, which means it is also no slouch when it comes to capturing photos. Its fixed lens has an equivalent focal length of 20 to 70 millimeters, ensuring that the ZV-1 is suitable for capturing everything from landscape scenes to portraits. Its advanced focus tracking includes IAF, which did a fantastic fantastic job of locking onto faces and keeping everything in focus during our testing. And thanks to its 3.5mm mic input, you'll be able to capture high-quality audio easily with an external microphone. But if you don't want to spend extra, its built-in mic still does a decent job. Number 1. Canon EOS M50 Mark II Although Canon seems to be primarily concentrating on its full-frame R-line, the more beginner-friendly APS-C EOS M range continues to be a big draw for those less experienced. The original Canon EOS M50 made our list and has only recently been replaced by the Mark II, which is a very minor upgrade on its predecessor. That means you get a simple user interface which offers helpful explanations and suggestions within the settings menu. Once you've got to grips a bit more with the camera, you can even disable it. Although light on physical controls, there's just enough here to keep it on right side of pleasingly ergonomic. Canon's award-winning dual pixel AF comes in handy for focusing on moving sub objects quickly and consistently, such as fast-moving action and fidgety pets. The EF-M15 to 45mm kit lens, which is bundled as standard with the M50 Mark II, is decent enough for everyday use, but should you find you want to expand your lens collection, this is where we found the M-series cameras to fall down compared to the competition. That said, you can use a plethora of DSLR lenses via an adapter, so there's a bit of a workaround there. That brings us to the end of our review and buyer's guide for the best best beginner cameras. Hope to see you in the next video. Let us know in the comments what is your favorite one. And if you like this content don't forget to subscribe and get notified when we launch new videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.